Hi, today we're going to be teaching some Kismet basics using a simple Plinko style game. Uh, I'm Brandon Stevens and I will be covering basic BSP construction and navigation inside of Kismet. Hi, I'm Waylon Fong and I'll be showing you how to set up a trigger so that you can spawn and delete the Plinko balls. I'm Chase and Harriet. I'm going to show you how to use triggers to set up lights and scoring inside the scoring bins. Alright, to begin with, I'm going to show you the finished product. Okay, jump in. As you can see, we have a tall room with high ceilings. We got pegs. The balls will spawn up near the top and fall through. Here's the trigger to activate. We hit E. The balls drop down into the scoring bins below. We get lights. On the left, you can see the score. And we can do it again. Balls down into the scoring bin. So this is what we are going to be creating. So to begin the tutorial, what we need to do is create the room. As you can see, we just have a hollow box as the uh, holding area. We got a player start, some triggers. Don't worry about setting up the triggers just yet because they will have some code to go along with them. But go ahead and get the play area set up. What we did was use 16-sided cylinders to act as our pegs. You need to offset them and make them just wide enough so the ball can fall through comfortably. And as you can see, with them being offset, it'll fall through, hit the next one, and go down. At the bottom, we got our scoring bins. These are just boxes with the tops opened up. You can either use a subtraction brush or whatever method you choose to use to have those opened up to catch the balls. The boxes themselves have a uh, transparent texture on them. We used a smoky style texture here, but if you can find some glass or whatever you want just so you can see through. The uh, blocking volume is the last step. You need to set this up for two reasons. One, it holds in the created balls, and two, it keeps the player from interacting with the triggers that are set up for the scoring. So now I'm going to teach you some basic Kismet uh, navigation. As you can see here, this may look pretty uh, intimidating to start off with, but this is the finished product. And uh, I'm just going to use it as an example to teach you how to navigate. Now to pan the window, you just left click and hold, and you can zoom or pan around. You can also do the same with the right. Using the left and right together, you can pan in and out, as so or you can use the middle mouse wheel to pan. To move an object, click the object, hold control, and then you can move it around with the left uh, click and hold. To do a marquee selection, hold in control and alt. You can click, uh, select multiple objects and do the same. So. Uh, Real quick, I'm going to show you how to create some simple objects. So we'll move over here where we have some clean space. By right clicking, we bring up our menu. You have new action, uh, new matinee, and so on and so forth. These all do separate things, but for us, our purposes, we are going to create a new action, actor, actor factory. Now, this is just here for our own purposes, so we're just going to move it over. Uh, we will be deleting this shortly. Uh, but first I want to teach you how to make a connection so we'll go ahead and create new action actor actor factory again go ahead and move this up and to make a connection we go from node to node you click on the node you drag and you'll get this line and you can connect the black node they're color coordinated so you connect to whatever colors there so we're going to take this to spawn actor once you have the arrow you know the connection has been completed. To disconnect this link, you can go right click on there, break link, and the link is broken. So once you get comfortable with the navigation of both the uh, objects and inside the window, you can go ahead and delete both of these, and uh, we, we are ready to continue. Okay, let's start by creating our trigger. Now in our example, we actually already have a trigger created, but you can create one by right-clicking on the ground and selecting Add Actor, Add Trigger. 
Now we're going to go into the trigger's properties by right clicking on the trigger and going to trigger properties and under display we want to uncheck the hidden property. That allows us to actually see our trigger in game when we're playing. I'm just going to delete this real quick since we already have one created. And uh, let's open up the Kismet editor and start scripting. So the first we want to, the first thing that we want to do is to create a trigger used event. We can do that by uh, first selecting our trigger, then going back to the Kismet editor, right click anywhere in the gray area, and select new event using trigger one or it might be new event using trigger zero on yours. Uh, but then you go to the used, um, and that should create our trigger used event. This event fires off whenever a trigger is used by pressing E next to it. Now we have to set up some, uh, some of its properties. So we go to the properties uh, menu on the bottom left and we want to go to the max trigger count property and set it to zero. That allows us to uh, that allows us to use this trigger an infinite number of times because if we had left it at one then we could only use the trigger once. And then we want to find the aim to interact property and uncheck that. That allows us to use the trigger simply by standing next to it rather than having to aim at it precisely. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is set up our actor factory, uh, which actually spawns the Plinko balls. So we'll create one by right-clicking, selecting new action, actor, actor factory. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move it next to the trigger used uh, event. And uh, we have to change some of its properties. So let's go into the properties and look for, let's see, we'll look for the factory property. And right now it says none. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it and uh, uh, select the create new object button, which is the blue triangle, and select actor factory rigid body. Um, basically what that is, is it's a mesh that uh, can be manipulated by physics. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select our static mesh. Um, so what we want to do is uh, close our Kismet editor and go into the content browser and we're going to go under engine, engine meshes, and select the sphere that's going to actually be our Plinko ball. So with that selected, I'm going to go back into the Kismet editor, which uh, if, you, if you just minimize the Kismet editor, it won't actually open when you click on the Open Kismet uh, button. That's because it's just down here minimized, so you just uh, maximize it. OK, go back to uh, the Actor Factory's properties. And uh, let's look for the Static Mesh property right here. So we we're going to select that and then click on the you selected object in content browser button which is the green arrow it basically allows you to put whatever's in the content browser uh, uh, to paste that into this property so as you can see we have our uh, our sphere as our static mesh now uh, and then we got to actually change the scale because uh, the plinko ball might not it might be too big to actually fit uh, between the pegs so we'll go to draw scale 3d and we'll go ahead and open that and for ours we we set ours to 0 0.35 but uh, you might have to play around with yours in order to get it to be the right size it depends on how far apart your pegs are 